welcome to the Bible study hour and welcome to our new series of studies that we have entitled God's Mission, My Mission. We are very early in the quarter so that we are understanding what this is all about as it relates to us. But sure enough, we will do that when we enter into this week's topic, which is God's call to mission. I'm always uh, feeling very comfortable when I know that I have my two pastors here with me, Pastor James Sunlin and Pastor Alden Mort, with me, Lorna Stevenson, as we go through this beautiful study. We express our appreciation to those who have assisted in making this a possibility and in particular, our sponsors, Easy Deal Auto Sales and Tours Limited. We are about to open our Bibles now to go into the study. Open your hearts and join us in our opening prayer to God. Our God and our Father in heaven, the sovereign ruler of the universe, we honor, we praise and adore your high name. Thank you for this wonderful privilege to study your truth. We invite your presence and ask for your guidance through your Holy Spirit now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God's call to mission. And that call comes to us in a very special memory text, which is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This is how the New King James Version puts it. It says... But you, but you shall, shall receive, receive power when, when the Holy Spirit, Spirit has come, come upon you, and, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Jesus himself was talking, and he was talking to his chosen disciples. Mm -hmm. I think, pastors, we need to put ourselves in that spot now mm -hmm. where we see ourselves as chosen disciples mm -hmm. as well. Oh, yes, certainly. Because he's sending us out. That's right. W would you care to make a special little comment on this for us, Pastor Mort? This is, um, as you said, a special call. And Jesus promised his <laughs> disciples to you know, receive power from the Holy Spirit. You're going to receive but you must start mission at mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. and then you move from home to the other community and then further away. And so you will see the Jerusalem, Judea, you know, Samaria and to the utmost part of this world. So God is saying we must do mission. Thank you very much. If we look at the first section of our lesson talking about moving beyond our comfort zone, we see a particular incident taking place there. And I'm going to be asking Pastor Sandlin to take us through this. He will no doubt use our reference first of all, which is Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 to 9. And I'm sure we'll want to do some comment on that. So I'll read Genesis 11, 1 to 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them Truly, and they had brick from stone, and slime had they from mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto the heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. 
So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. We are seeing here, it is just after the flood, and um, we know that the majority of the people had lost their lives because of their failure to accept God's invitation to enter the ark. So here they are now, deciding to build an, uh, a, a tower that would reach into the heavens. Uh, obviously, they forgot what God said because the promise God gave to Noah is that he would not destroy this earth with water anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they were building a tower, obviously trying to escape a, another expected flood. So what were they trying to do? They were trying to provide their own salvation, their own safety. Mm -hmm. They did not trust God. They wanted to work out their own plans and to do it by themselves. And you know, God said, because they were so united, they were going to fulfill their, their, their desire. But what we need to do is to trust God and to be willing to follow what God says rather than our own desire. There's one point you've made there that you have repeated, and that is about trusting God. You know, when you really don't trust God, what you really do is, is you, you take charge. Yes. You take over yes. and you do your own thing. In other words, you're trying to rule God. Mm -hmm. yes. Because if you're not trusting God to rule you, then what you're doing is outside of your ruling God. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> now, these people, they were comfortable together with their one yes. language. Yes. But God says, well, that's not what I have in mind mm -hmm. for you. No. Therefore, I'm going to make you a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the thought comes to me that sometimes when we think we are being a little bit uncomfortable, it's a sign that God is still trying with us. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. Because I'm sure that's what he had in mind. Mm -hmm. You probably want to say a little thing about this, Pastor Mort. But when you look at it all, you see that these people were one. Yes. And look at what they try to do. What if they were using this unity to do God's work? What would they accomplish by their unity? And so we realized because they were united, they, they went up against the promise of God in that God said, no more, I will not destroy this earth with, I will not destroy this earth with water anymore. Mm -hmm. And they say, hey, we can't trust him. So they built a tower. And even in spite of that, God want to witness to them still. What a loving God we serve. And not only did God want to witness to them still, but what God wanted to give them a chance yes. to witness for him. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> and not just in their locality, but That's God right. uh, all decided over. to scatter yes. them all over. All over. Yes. 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 So we see coming out of this, God reaching out to mankind mm -hmm. as we had studied before. And we are looking now at what happened when he reached out to a special man in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, God, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and to a land that I will shew thee and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. In thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. We are looking at a subheading which talks about becoming a blessing to the whole world. Now, how did God make this clear to Abraham? Now, when you, you look, you know, Abraham was, you know, with his father, in his father's country. And, you know, God just, one day does God say to Abraham, Abraham, I want you to leave. 
you know, take your family, your immediate family, and go, and I will show you a land. You know, it is difficult. It was a difficult decision. It's like leaving your what? comfort zone. And Abraham obeyed God. And when he reached Canaan, God said, listen, I want your ministry to be extended. I want to bless you so that you can bless others. So Abraham, you are going to sojourn this land, but you are going to be our, you are going to be my witness to share the good news of salvation. And so even if you go in to the, the, in Genesis, you will see that over and over, God, you know, stated the covenant that listen, I am going to come and I'm going to die for humanity because he talked about the seed, the seed that represents Jesus Christ, that Jesus would come and die. So this message, Abraham was taken to the Gentiles. And when God promised Abraham that through him, all the world will be blessed, as you rightly said, he continued that promise down through the ages, yes. from one to the next, yes. to the next, and to the next. Yes. But it's interesting to note that if he was going to be a blessing to the entire world, then he couldn't be confined in one little spot there. Not at all. He had to be going everywhere mm -hmm. because uh, as, the, as the text says, mm -hmm. that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So it means that Abraham, wherever he went, he was supposed to be a blessing. blessing. And so his generation mm -hmm. would also be a blessing. Now, if one is going to be a blessing, he has to be receiving the blessing. That's right. And yes. that is why God That's says, right. I'm yeah. going to bless you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you are going to be a blessing. Now, the reverse of that is not good. If we're blessed by <laughs> God and we are not a blessing to others, then that's a serious problem. We ought to share God's blessing in whatever form that is going to enhance the, the lives of people. All right. That promise that God made to Abraham, that through his seed, all the earth would be blessed. Mm -hmm. Can you see how this comes out in Genesis chapter 17, verse 19, and Matthew chapter 1, verse 21? Now, the word of God says in Genesis 17, 19, and God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed <clears throat> after him. So the blessing is going to come, first of all, through Isaac, his son. That's right. And here is the fulfillment of the promise now in the life of Jesus, Matthew 1 verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So it's not only temporal blessings. God is more interested in giving the spiritual blessings. That's right. And his son, Jesus Christ, would have come one day to save sinners. For me, that's the greatest blessing that anyone could have. But Pastor, interestingly enough, when you go back to, you know, the, the reference in Genesis chapter 17, there's something there that I find that is special because let's face it, Abraham had more than one son. Yes. yes. I mean, biologically. Yes. But that reference is so specific. Mm -hmm. Thy wife, Sarah. That's yes. right. <laughs> yes. That one, because that was the only mm -hmm. one. Of course. By Sarah. And I, and I am seeing this to be saying, yes. uh, there is no way that God's blessings can truly be fulfilled in deviating from his plan. That's right. So, the fullness of the blessing is achieved when we are cooperating with him. Mm -hmm. And once we're doing that, the blessings can come its fullness and can now be a blessing to all those who come after. Yes. And you did mention earlier on about that total, overall, mm -hmm. universal blessing Yes, through Jesus. Right. So then, Jesus is coming from the lineage of Abraham. Thank you. Yep, from yes. the lineage of Abraham. And what a blessing he has been to all humanity. 
Thou shalt call his name Jesus, mm -hmm. for he shall save his people from their sins. Right, Pastor mm -hmm. Mort? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. Good. All right. So we're going to, we're continuing with this, this study that we are doing, God's call to mission. And we have talked about, you know, this comfort zone thing with the persons who, you know, came up after the flood, a little bit after the flood, mm -hmm. that generation. And we have talked about the special promise that God made mm -hmm. to Abraham and how it was fulfilled mm -hmm. through Jesus. But now we are going to be talking about some other aspect of this journey mm -hmm. as we talk about the mission. Yes. So if we go to Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 10. And then chapter 13, verse 1. We'll see something else coming out there. And it says, And there was a famine in the land. And Aram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. Verse 13, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it says, And Aram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. All right. What we have done there, we have taken the introduction to a particular incident. Mm -hmm. And we have skipped out the middle. Mm -hmm. And we get you to the end, the conclusion. Yeah. So... Help us fill in the in-between now. Because there is a special lesson for us to learn from this section of our study, talking about Abraham's call. Yes. We, as was, was read, the, there was a famine in the land of Canaan where Abraham uh, came to first. Mm -hmm. And it was so grievous that he went down to Egypt. But one, when he got down into Egypt, he, he was feeling very fearful for his own life. He said to Sarah, I know you're a beautiful lady and the men of the land may want to kill me to take you from me. So tell them that you are my sister so that my life would be spared. And so it was that the, the people told the king that this lady was here, beautiful lady, and the king took Sarah. And um, Abraham could have been killed, but because he was... Uh, known to be sister, our brother rather, uh, to Sarah. They didn't kill him, but took Sarah. And, and God intervened. What, what I am seeing here, though, is that lack of faith. Mm -hmm. Lack of total trust in God for your safety can cause you to make some decisions that are not the best. It's interesting, Pastor, you're talking about lack of faith. When we refer to Abraham mm -hmm. as well, the true. father of the faithful. Yes. So it's telling us something there mm -hmm. about our journey along with this mission. Yes. That not mm -hmm. because you are a godly person, you may fail somewhere along the way. But the important thing is that Abraham, Abraham recognized his failure mm -hmm. and was willing to correct that. And that is important. That's right. Yes, Pastor. When Abraham visited Canaan, God appeared and said, this is the land that I will give to you. Mm -hmm. And Abraham was probably looking and say, hey, this land is mine. But he saw Canaanites in the land. So, you know, when he saw that, you know, God appeared unto him again and said, Abraham, this land is for your descendants. So it's not only for you, but for your generation to come. And after that, look what he had, a famine came. You can just imagine how he felt. You know, the land was promised. And um, I think that I would occupy it. I, I left my nice home and I'm in a, a place like this. And then no famine and then the famine was so great that he had to leave to Egypt. So he was now in a, a 
country, a foreign country, not the way God promised. And as you see that even there, he has pastors declared that, you know, the wife and was built and be understand. But when, and sometimes God does that, you know, to us, God allow us to pass through some difficulties mm -hmm. so that we may have testimonies That's to right. share yeah. to those around us. So in, in the whole journey with God, we'll have life's situations around us. Yeah. Yes. We end up where, you know, we, we, we thought would be all right, but it wasn't so all right. Mm, right. There's famine we have to move. But apart from these yes. life situations, there was also self yes. that came in as yes, an right. obstacle. Mm -hmm. Because when Abraham had his experience in Egypt, he wasn't trying to save Sarah, his wife. Was he was trying to save himself. Yes. But as you said earlier on, we do make mistakes, but when we are willing to follow God, yes, God is very forgiving and merciful. Yes. Amen. That's right. We, we look at another section of this mission business and the comfort zone that sometimes God takes us out of. Mm -hmm. And we go to the early church and their comfort zone. Let's read Acts chapter 8 verses 1 to 4. Acts chapter 8 verses 1 to 4 shares this story about the early church and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to the burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Okay. We're branching off into, you know, specific things that are happening there. But if we pay attention to the verse which talks about those who were scattered abroad. Mm -hmm. To begin with, why were they scattered? Persecution. Persecution. That's right. Mm -hmm. So God sort of all start to make them uncomfortable now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some movement must take place now. Mm -hmm. That's right. Persecution made them scatter. Yes. But the Bible distinctly tells us that they were scattered abroad, but they did not go abroad and keep quiet. Mm -hmm. They took the gospel there with them. Yes. I want to just say something here before you make your little point there that we are to remember that it was not the scattering that made their mission possible. They had the missionary spirit in them before mm -hmm. the scattering took place. That's right. So they just continued it mm -hmm. when they were scattered. Yes. What else would we want to talk about the early church and comfort zones? If, Go ahead, Pastor Mort. If you know that even while they were scattered, they were sharing the gospel to Jews. So the Lord again is to move upon the, the heart of Peter mm -hmm. to deliver a special message and um, to call leaders and God appeared to call leaders also mm -hmm. to say hey, a Gentile. All right, so basically what you're saying is that God also worked on taking Peter yeah. out of his comfort, comfort zone. Yes. 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 Because his comfort zone was with the Jews. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes yes. As, as God's children, we have our weaknesses and our yes. short-sightedness. Um, for the Jews, many of them believe that the Gentiles were not accepted by God. Mm -hmm. and, and the missionaries were going places, but somehow they did not overcome that weakness. And for them, preaching to the Jews was what God intended. So we have to be willing to get rid of our prejudices. We have to be willing to, to see all human beings as prospects for God's kingdom and be willing to go beyond our own family, our own country, our own race, our ethnic group to every other group. 
in the world because everyone needs to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will recall, pastors, that when we started our study, we started with a memory text, which is Acts chapter 1 verse, one, eight. verse 8. And we are finishing off our study, mm -hmm. abridged though it might be, mm -hmm. we are finishing off with Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Because the important emphasis here is that mission is for the whole world, mm -hmm. but we must start where we are. That's right. Starting from where you are. So let's look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8 again. As recorded in the memory text, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. How do we link this with the idea of starting from where you are? The idea is that those around you must get the gospel. Let's, let's, let's face it. The Jewish leaders needed the gospel because many of them somehow did not understand it. And some, when they heard, did not believe it. God's intention was that those at home need to get the gospel. And I want to look at it this way. Can you imagine you bring all of the new believers in the church mm -hmm. and those who are in the church don't have a clue of what it is that they need to know. Uh, they're only going to make it worse for the new ones. And so Jesus wanted to make sure that those in Jerusalem get it first, your own people, your own family. So we need to preach to our own family and then go out to the others. Would you like to add to that, Pastor Moore? Uh, yes. Um, the, the, the less, I just want to read that section of the rest. However, Jesus' great commission tells us that as his weakness, moving out of our comforting zone and investing our resources for such a people group is crucial. They also need the message of Jesus Christ. So this is telling us that we must witness to those who are in our comforting, comforting zone, uh, comfort zone, and then witness to those who are out of our comfort zone. So we start zone. where we are, whether it's in the home mm -hmm. or in the church right. or right beside you, your neighbor, whatever yes. it is, yes. and we move out yes. to various parts around us. There are some people who are very anxious to do missionary work mm -hmm. and they want to go to different countries, faraway countries to do mm -hmm. missionary work, yes. but yet they are not involved in the church work right. at home. Mm -hmm. The lesson is saying to us, start right at home That's right. and then move further afield. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes we would like to have so much more time to discuss all yeah. of these beautiful lessons. But viewers, I just want to say to you at this time that we have been through this beautiful lesson talking about God's call to mission. And it's all about mission as we study through this quarter. So we want you to take your lesson from this. Remember, there's always something for each of us. The overall topic talks about God's mission, my mission. It makes it very personal. So you are involved. And this week's study is reminding you that you start right where you are because everybody is called, everybody who is called by God is called for mission. That's right. So we are saying to you, remember to join us next week when we meet again to continue our study. And remember that during this week, you have a special mission that God has given you. Please ask God to show you that opportunity and grab it as you see it so that we can all go on God's mission because that's what he has placed us here for. And I'm saying to all of us, we hope that we will be able to study together again next time when we meet and may God really bless you as we go through the instructions that he has penned for us in his holy word. Join us now for a closing prayer. Everlasting Father, we thank you for giving us such a special message to share at home and abroad. We ask for your divine Holy Spirit. Bless the viewers 
continue to give them insight and understanding so that they too can share the blessing of Jesus. Hear our prayer, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.